I guess we'll see how this goes. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, very excited to be with you here tonight, although uh, it has been a, uh, well, it's been a day. I'll say that. Uh, from the start of the day, it's been a day. And uh, I don't even have my chat up right now because I was just texting with Joey Mullen about something that I will be talking about here in a couple of minutes. Forgot to open it up. Uh, so, okay, folks. Thank you, Zen. Thank you, Melissa Jeswald. Thank you, Curtis Crump. Telling me that the audio and video is good. Okay. Um, lots, lots and lots and lots to talk about. Um, and I want to tell you about my day. And when I tell you about my day, it will reveal to you why Lisa is not with us here tonight. Um, she is gonna, going to be absent from the stream tonight, but she will be in the chat. And uh, you will know exactly why that is in just a moment um, when I explain to you how my day has been so far. Um, but before we get into that, uh, there is something that Lisa was preparing to talk about, and she was going to be the one to address this uh, opening up the stream. She was actually going to open the stream tonight, and it was going to be the first time that she was going to do it by herself. Like, she was going to be the one that welcomed all of you and uh, and said hello and got the stream up and running because she had something very important that she wanted to talk about. Um, and with her not being here with us tonight, uh, she is in the chat, but she's certainly not going to um, type all this up in the chat. Um, it's, it's on to me now to talk about this. And it's not something I like talking about because, oh, geez, it sounds like it's, it's happening too much these days. Um, you know, social media, social media is a beautiful thing. It's how I make my living. A lot of my friends make their living on social media. Um, it's, it's allowed my wife and I to fulfill all of our wildest dreams. However, there, there's a, there's a big downside to it. And I don't think, I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about this. And that is that you get to know people that you otherwise would not know in real life. If I was to go back to 1993, I would have never known Jake Adams. I would have never known Brian Barczyk. Uh, these were guys that, I, I mean, I had not been to their homes, um, but I was, they were friends. I could call those guys, either one of them, uh, whenever I wanted to. I mean, I, I certainly knew Jake more than I did Brian, but the point I'm trying to make is, if it wasn't for social media, I would have never known those guys. And in the last year and a half, we lost both of them. We all watched Brian Barczyk as he went through his struggle. And, uh, you know, Jake was a complete surprise to everybody. And if it wasn't for social media, we would not have experienced that heartache. Um, and that, that heartache doesn't end. Uh, you, you continue to experience uh, trauma through others. And uh, this week has been no different. We lost a member of the Fish Fam community, a member of the KG Tropicals community, a moderator on the KG Tropicals channel, uh, still is a moderator on the KG Tropicals channel. Uh, Myrtle Singh, somebody that uh, I don't, I don't want to claim he was all ours, a very active member of the fish keeping community online. Uh, he was not only a moderator for us, but also uh, multiple channels across the fish fam, fish uh, aquarium community. Uh, he was all over the place. He was one of those names like, like the Zen Ginger and Stephen P that you see all the time. Everywhere you go, you see, you would see Myrtle Singh. A uh, very talented young man. I, I did not know him really, but Lisa got to know him over the last couple of years quite a bit because he's the same age as our daughter, a uh, senior in college. 
uh, about to graduate and uh and he passed away this week uh, we we do not know how or you know we don't know any of the details surrounding why it happened but how it happened does it really matter i mean does it change anything he's gone and that sucks and i'm tired of this i i i gotta be honest i would not hate going back to the days where i'd be like who's that you know because i wouldn't know him because you know i'm in my own little bubble because we don't have social media that opens us up to the whole world um it's a beautiful thing until things like this happen where you see a, a young man in college very promising doing good things and then out of nowhere gone uh it's terrible it's it's very very sad especially when they're that young uh i mean i was devastated with jake and with uh brian but these are both guys that were mature adults uh brian a little bit older than than jake certainly both of them way too young to go but at least they had experienced life and and knew what it was all about myrtle was just getting started and that is uh it's very tragic having two kids well really i mean we'll say two very close in age to him um it really hits hard that uh that that happened i have a link uh i don't know if lisa has shared it uh, didn't you give me this link no you didn't give me a link lisa um somebody's going to share a link um that is to his obituary and a guest book and that's that's one of the beautiful things about social media it has its good sides and it has its bads bads bad sides but one of the good sides is we can all come together as a community and we can show his family that that he was appreciated and he was loved by this community um that's all i really can say about it uh that's really all i know about it it sucks it's very sad and uh and that's that uh we will miss him because he was definitely a big part of this channel and the fish keeping community will miss him uh lisa it was very important to her to be part of the stream tonight so that she could be the one to tell all of you that but unfortunately she wasn't able to make it in and now i'm going to explain why i want to i want to kind of lighten the mood up here a little bit a lot of what we're about to talk about has to do with animals maybe not fish but uh before we start seeing people there's the guest book there uh zen ginger shared that uh if we could all as a community do that uh this is a big stream for us here tonight folks because there's the possibility that we might be able to achieve that that 500,000 subscriber mark it seems so non-important considering what we've been talking about but uh you know i didn't know what else to call this stream tonight so it'd be a big deal for us if we were to do that and and if we're able to do that that's going to mean that there's been a lot of people in this stream tonight people that are active in the community people who are uh sharing the love of this hobby with each other take the time to uh to go and sign that guest book and show his family that that we're all here and we knew him and we're gonna miss him um so my day started bright and early this morning I left the house at at 8 30 which you know being self-employed and working from home i don't leave the house at 8 30 all that often but I did today. Why? Because I had an appointment to get all three of my dogs groomed. I have a beagle and two chihuahuas. Now you might be thinking, John, <laughs> the chihuahuas are practically bald and a beagle is just a wired hound, wired haired hound dog. What in the world are you getting them groomed for? Well, it's because I really like the groomer. They clean their ears. They clip their nails. They do whatever the thing is with the butthole and they trim their paws and you know they make them smell real good and they put the little bandana around them and stuff and it's adorable and it's absolutely worth the money even if it's just to get their nails done i don't know about y'all but i despise cutting dogs nails i i uh cut to the wick on or is it the quick the quick john wick the quick 
I cut to the quick on my golden retriever one time and she just went er, and it didn't really bother her that much, but she bled everywhere. And I felt horrible about that. Um, I didn't know about the little styptic pens or whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, so I've been terrified to clip nails ever since. Um, but you know, when I take them to the groomer, they come back and their nails are nice and sharp or nice and short. So I have this old, it's not old, it's a almost 10 year old uh, cargo van, mini cargo van uh, that I used to use for my furniture repair business. We still have it. We use it basically one day a week now to take orders for the website, keepfishkeeping.com. There's our plug. Um, the majority of our orders get shipped out on Mondays because everything from Friday at 2 p.m. all the way through Monday at 2 p.m., all of those orders ship out on Monday. And obviously, you know, weekends are big shopping weekends. So the bulk of our orders come out or come into us over the weekend. And so Mondays are crazy and there it's way too much to stick into the bed of my truck. Uh, typically on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, my pickup truck will be full. The bed, the back seat, everything will be full of orders. But on Mondays, it's too much to get into the van. So that's why we've kept it. Well, when I take the dogs to the groomers, I use that because I don't want to get their hair all over my truck. That's a huge pain. Plus, I have a pickup truck. It's a four-wheel drive pickup truck. You know, getting my old Beagle up into there is, is not exactly easy. So this little van is perfect. Put them in the van, drive over to the groomers this morning, about 10 minutes away. My appointment was at 9 o'clock. I get there at about 8.55. Pull up, and it's a very, very small groomer. Uh, it's very small. And so they would rather us not go in. I've been in there before. Um, but they would rather us just hand off our dogs in the parking lot and then they take them in. But we have to let them know that we're here. They have a little bell on the door. So I get out of the van. I leave the dogs in there, leave the van running, take literally three steps because we, you literally park right in front of the door, take three steps to the door, ring the bell. She comes out. I go to get my dogs out. And what happened? My male chihuahua, Ike, locked the doors. <laughs> I have a Ram Promaster City van. And the locking mechanism on a Promaster City is dumb. It's dumb. Basically, what you do is you push down ever so lightly onto the door handle itself that you would use to open the door. You just push down on that and the doors lock. Well, Ike jumps up in the front seat. He gets up on the armrest to look out the window. And when he does that, he locks the doors. So now I'm standing there. All three dogs are in there. My, my beagle is howling, ruining like beagles do. And what am I supposed to do? Lisa has a very, uh, very strict regiment that she goes through in the mornings and none of it involves her phone. So I used, my phone was in the van. Everything was in the van. I used the phone at the groomer, call her up. No answer, call again, no answer, call again, no answer. So what am I going to do? Fortunately, <laughs> I live in a very, very small town, the kind of small town where if you call the police, they get to you like that. The groomer said, well, the dogs are trapped in there, even though it's not hot. You know, that is something that the police would respond for. And I'm like, come on, I'd, I'd be so embarrassed. And she's like, no, this happens all the time. So I'll call the police department and, you know, we'll see what happens. And I'm thinking, OK, I'm going to be here a while. You know, I might as well just hang out. She's going to do the grooming. It only takes a couple hours to do all three dogs. And I'll just take, anyway, police department shows up. It, I swear it was like three minutes because the police department's two blocks down the road. Guy shows up, he breaks my balls a little bit, has a little bit of fun with it. They do the thing and they, they get it open. It takes them no time at all. And uh, so, yeah, and I've got bikers jumping behind me too. So 
that was a great start of the day. But other than that, everything went very smoothly. Um, we proceed through the day and it was pretty uneventful, pretty normal day. And uh, Lisa, she packed orders today for the website um, because she, I, I would normally pack on Thursdays, but um, she's going to be gone tomorrow. Tomorrow would normally be my, what we call YouTube day, where I would edit YouTube videos, film videos, all that. And uh, we swapped it because she's going to be going somewhere, which I don't know if she's going to go anymore, but uh, she's going to be going somewhere tomorrow. So we swapped it. Today's my YouTube day. So I spent the whole day putting the fi final touches on this Sunday's video. And, uh, and I go out. She's about to leave. Uh, we got an order. Again, shameless plug. We got a, a pretty good size shipment from Tropica today. So I'm done with my video. I get that shipment from Tropica. I take it out to the warehouse. I'm putting it away into all of the tanks. And she's getting ready to leave. And I look at her and I say, hey, wait a minute. You're, 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 you're going downhill, aren't you? Like I could tell, I could tell there was, she was not right. Uh, she hasn't been feeling good the last couple of days. Uh, our youngest came home over the weekend, sick as a dog. Like, why'd you come here, dummy? <laughs> but he, you know, had the flu or something. I don't know what he had, but he was, he pretty much slept all day on Saturday. And uh, so I think Lisa's been fighting that all week all week long she's been like i'm not feeling good but i'm gonna fight through it i'm gonna get it's gonna be fine uh, you know but today when she was about to leave to take the orders and pick up dinner which is a normal routine on thursday thursday's pizza night um i, I could look at her and i could tell you're not right something's wrong she said no i'm fine it's no big deal i'll get through it not a problem okay so I'm putting plants away. Um, I have a very particular process that I go through to put plants away. And it takes a while because we get hundreds of plants a week. And um, she calls me. I don't know. No, I called her because I am given a time to order the pizza. And I forgot what she wanted. I don't even remember if she wanted pizza or pasta. So I called her. She was fine. No, no problem at all. And uh, asked her what she wanted. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll take pizza, not pasta. Okay, fine. Order her pizza and mine, of course. And, uh, you know, like maybe 15 minutes later, I'm putting plants away and I get a call from her. She is, I, I don't know if y'all's Pizza Hut has this, but our Pizza Hut has a drive through which is nice. Order on the app, pick it up in the drive-thru. It's nice. She calls me from the drive-thru and says, I'm not feeling right. And how do I say this delicately? I've been through this with her before. Uh, she, ha she, when she is, uh, when she's not feeling well, I don't know if she wants me to talk about this, but uh, I'll just get in trouble for it and I'll just deal with that later. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Uh, a lot of times if she's really, really feeling bad, she will have panic attacks. And that's exactly what happened. Um, in the drive through going to Pizza Hut. And so she's like on the phone with me, getting the pizza, and I'm just like, just park. I'll come get you. It's no big deal. Just park. Don't try to drive home. So the, the convenient thing is the drive through goes straight into a parking space. So she just went and parked, went and got her and uh, her car's still there. <laughs> Anybody wants to go and steal a, a little Nissan? It's there. It's waiting for you. Uh, please don't because we plan on going back and getting it tonight after the live stream. You know, it is what it is. But uh, that's been my day, folks. Either uh, locking myself out of the car or having to go and rescue my wife from, uh, 
from that. <laughs> I don't mean to play it off as if it's no big deal. It is a, it's a serious thing. And um, I, you know, I can see it from a mile away when it happens, but I, I've, I've not, I'm not a person that experiences panic attacks myself, but we have a kid that does a two actually. And her, um, I can see it from a mile away and I know that's exactly what's going on. And, uh, and so I'm able to handle it because I know what to do. I know she just needs to calm down, take a deep breath, get some air, relax, and we can get her talked down and, uh, and, and everything will be okay. But she was in no condition. And I told her, I said, you're not even thinking about live streaming tonight. Um, you, you need to be in bed. And, uh, but then there's the complication of needing to go get her car. We'll see how it goes, but that's how my day has gone. Um, it hasn't been a fun one. <laughs> now let's talk about some good stuff. Shall we? I've got big news, big news around the fins and fury boxing match. You might be wondering what that is. What in the heck are you talking about, John? Well, listen, folks, you may not be aware of this, but there's going to be a lot of fish keeping YouTubers getting in the boxing ring and fighting each other in August in New York. Um, it's on Long Island and I don't, I, I've got the website up right here right now. I don't remember the name of the building plus my um, vision is really bad, but it's in Long Island, New York. Uh, the, the main event is the King of DIY, Joey Mullen, who's probably in the chat. I was just texting with him. You heard my phone ringing when I, uh, started up and that, that was him getting me some last minute information to share with you here tonight. Uh, the King of DIY, Joey Mullen will be fighting, uh, Rod from Predatory Fins. That is the, the main event, um, there's a lot of other fights, though. Joey said uh, there will be nine fights. Now, there are not fights listed on the website yet. The website is finsandfury.com. Uh, I will share a link to that momentarily. Uh, F-I-N-S-N-F-U-R-Y. We've got Joey Mullen, Rod Rodrigo. Come on, John. Rodrigo Rojas, which is Rod from Predatory Fins, Lucas Bretz, Troy Holler, Merrick Gregorez. I'm sorry. That's terrible. That's a terrible, terrible pronunciation of his name. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, Brian Fitzsimmons, Eric Triplett, which I just learned tonight uh, is a guy I've had on my live stream back in like 2016. Very excited to, uh, to see that. And Michael Anthony, these are all the fighters that have been officially announced. I'm not able to talk about who's fighting who, even though I know some of them. Uh, I'm going to let, uh, I'm gonna let the, the, the real folks do that. But why am I talking about this? Well, got a call from Joey uh, several months ago, last year. And he told me about this and he asked me, did I want to become involved in it? And I said, I absolutely do not. <laughs> There's no way my 50 year old self is getting in the ring with anybody. And he said, no, I want you to commentate this for the pay-per-view. And I said, well, that I can do. And I'm so excited about that to be able to do something that I've never done. I know how to do it because I've been watching boxing my whole life. I grew up watching Roberto Duran with my dad and, and um, it's been something I, I've, I watched Mike Tyson in his prime and Lennox Lewis, Evander Holyfield, Tommy Morrison, all, all of these fighters that you see YouTube videos of. I watched those fights live. My dad would get all the pay-per-views. So um, certainly not a boxing expert or, uh, or uh, you just call me an enthusiast. I love it. It's so much fun. And to, to get the opportunity to sit ringside and commentate for pay-per-view, I know how cheesy it sounds, but that's almost like a dream come true for me. And uh, so I'm super excited that he asked me to do it. And, uh, and of course I said, yes, I will. 
Uh, that is coming up in August. And uh, I will be there along with my co-commentator. Uh, this is something I alluded to last week, but I was not able to actually say it because I don't think it was official yet, but it is official now. Uh, Jay Wilson will be my co-commentator. I remember mentioning it last week and uh, a lot of people said Jason and that's a natural, that, that that's a perfect guess because I do the podcast with Jason and Jason and I work really well together. Um, that would make sense to do that. However, it's another Jason and this one, I, I believe I would have loved it if it was Jason Adams, that would have been great. But Jay Wilson has that energy that is going to be, it's going to take this to another level. I'm going to be exhausted when this thing is over with and all I'm going to be doing is talking because Jay is an energy maniac. Uh, there's no doubt he will be the color commentator in this uh in this duo here but it's i'm so excited to be able to say that uh because it's been up in the air there was another I, well actually i i can i can talk about it because this was mentioned before it was originally going to be paul cafaro um which i was totally excited for and that's totally fine i don't know paul uh but that's okay i mean I, you know we would have gotten to know each other and it would have been fine um but it turns out he wants to do other things with the event. I'm not going to say what that is. Uh, so he's not going to be able to do the commentary. And uh, Jay Wilson is going to be the guy. So I'm so excited about that. Um, it's going to be so much fun. This is an event that you will be able to attend live. I know, um, obviously, I'll be there. Lisa will be there with me. Um, Tamara, Joey's wife will be there. Um, Kev from, um, caveman aquatics will be there. There's, there's a lot of, I don't know if I was supposed to say that, but he's going to be there. There's going to be a lot of people there. It's going to be a huge event that you will be able to go to live. Excuse me. But if you can't make it live, you can join me on the pay-per-view from home. Watch it on your phone, sit on the toilet. I don't care. And I'm going to be completely upfront with y'all. I mean, and listen, I'm not doing this for money. I don't care about money. Um, there is an opportunity for me to make a dollar or two. Uh, and that would be if you use my link for the pay-per-view. Um, now, I want to be very clear when I say this. I could get paid for this, but I don't really care to. Um, because there is um, the proceeds of this event are going to the Legacy Aquarium. If you're not familiar with what that is, that is the uh, aquarium that's being built in Michigan that was built by Brian Barczyk, um and was almost done before he passed. And so I, I, what an amazing cause to to donate the proceeds of this event for. I don't know how much of the proceeds. It might be 100% of the proceeds. I don't know. I don't have anything to do with the money side of things. Um, so, you know, when Joey asked me if I would become involved in this, I didn't say, hey, what's in it for me? You know, I assumed if you're asking me to do this and travel to this, I assumed my travel and stuff like that would be covered. And it is. And that's fine. Uh, but I didn't care about, you know, what's my paycheck going to look like? Oh, I don't I don't need to know that. Um, but there is. There is an opportunity for me to make a few dollars, which should be, which will be uh, from the pay-per-view sales. If you choose to buy this event uh, on pay-per-view and listen to your boy with Jay Wilson, do the commentary of all nine fights so far, nine fights with Joey and Rod being the main event. Uh, listen, <laughs> it's going to be worth the money. I put the link in there right there. That is my affiliate link for the event. And um, we'll make a couple dollars. I mean, it's we're not going to get rich off of this thing. And I don't care to get rich off of this thing. Um, but that that is an opportunity. If you click that link, uh, you're going to save $10 off of the price because it's $34 if you pre-order the pay-per-view now. It's $44 if you buy it 
at the time of the event, which is what I, uh, that's what I was asking Joey at the last minute, how much that was. Um, so you save 10 bucks if you pre-order the fight now, which you can do through that link. Um, and I would encourage you please to use that link. That way your boy and Lisa, while she's laying in bed right now, gets a couple dollars off of that. Um, like I said, I'm going to be honest with you. If we don't make a dollar, I don't care. I, I really don't because I'm going to be going up there. I'm going to be around a lot of people that I know. Uh, you know, Joey and I are friends. I've known Joey since 2013. Um, I don't really know Rod, but we're all friends, right? I mean, Troy Holler, I'm, I'm friends with Lucas, Eric. There's a lot of people on this list that, that I know. And I, and I know some of them well. Um, to be able to watch them hopefully not make fools of themselves like I would if I was to get in the ring. Um, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. I cannot, when I look at these guys, uh, like Lucas Bretz, I, let me tell you something. I've hung out with Lucas many, many times. Lucas is not a big fella. He's not a, he's not a big guy, but I wouldn't want to fight him. <laughs> he looks like one of those guys that would surprise you. And all of a sudden you'd be like, pop, pop. And you're like, where'd that come from? That came from Lucas Bretz is where that came from. Not a threatening bone in that man's body, which is more the reason why I would not want to fight him. Uh, Troy Holler, another one. Uh, he's significantly larger than Lucas, meaning he's not a fat guy. No, he's a marathon runner, but he's taller, significantly taller. Um, but he's another one that he's so he's such a nice guy. Just so soft-spoken. You watch his videos. If you don't know the name Troy Holler, shame on me. We're talking about one of the cichlid bros. Uh, I, I've, I've talked with Troy so many times. Such a great guy. Just a great human being. And so soft-spoken. And you just wouldn't imagine him being in a boxing ring. I can't tell you who any of these people are fighting, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to be a lot of fun. I am so looking forward to buying a new suit, going up there, and putting on my best Joe Rogan impression, <coughs> I guess, is what I'm going to be doing. I think I'll probably play more of the uh, Jim Lampley role. Uh, or what, Cotton? What's the, what is, uh, what is Jace, Jason, daggone it, what's the guy on uh, ESPN, the Ocho? Come on, from, from Dodgeball? Uh, let's see how that works out for him. Cotton, you know, that guy, the, the, the Jason, come on. How am I not remembering his name? Anyway, Jay is going to be that guy. He's going to get a big tattoo on his neck and everything. Jason Bateman, come on. And, uh, I'm going to be cotton, I guess, which just call me Lundberg. But anyway, it's going to be so much fun. And, uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I hope that I'm in a, in a place where I'm able to actually between fights, get up in the ring and interview, you know, do that, that immediate reaction interviews with these fighters immediately after. I don't know if that's going to be me. I hope it is. I, I asked Joey, are you going to be wanting me to do that kind of thing? And he said, yeah, but this event is being put on by this, massive production company. I mean, like this is a real thing here, folks. This isn't a couple of YouTubers getting together in their garage and selling tickets to it. No, this is at a real venue with a real production company. Like there's going to be ambulances there. Like it's a real thing here. Uh, and so I don't know if they are, if they're going to have somebody that's going to be doing that. I don't know, but I hope it's me getting up in there. And uh, even possibly even, you know, going to the locker rooms and doing pre-fight interviews. I, I think I will, I'm up for it. I'll do all of it. I hope they let me do it. That'll be a lot of fun, possibly even uh, like the weigh-in and all that. kind. Of, we'll see. I don't know. But this is a real deal. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be a major part of it, not with my shirt off fighting in the ring, but, uh, but telling you play-by-play -play of everything that's happening. Uh, giving you all of the information on the fighters. I've got a lot of them already um, scheduled, uh, not scheduled, but I, I've cleared with all of them, including some that are not on the list uh, to set up 
I'm going to do interviews with them, private interviews with all of the fighters to get to know things about them that uh, I don't already know that I can uh, relay in the, in the fights and all that kind of stuff. Just so I know more about these fighters. I'm taking this seriously. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope I do a great job. I think I will because I, uh, I'm going to be prepared. I can tell you that. We have the ring announcer and the ring girls, but neither interview the fighters. So it would be John. There you go. Thank you, Joey, for clearing that up. I'm excited about that. Uh, I just hope they don't get mad at me like Floyd Mayweather would do. You know, that's a, that's a traumatic moment for them. Uh, whether, whether you win or lose, you've just gone through multiple rounds of trauma i mean who wants to have a conversation with some goofy bald guy immediately after they just got into a fight i don't know but uh if you can't tell i'm really excited about this and it's going to be a lot of fun uh you'll be commentating with your shirt off though that i can promise you will not be happening uh and that i can also promise you you would not like to see <laughs> Uh, sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. You see what I'm saying, folks? This is the real deal. And you never know. There might be some celebrities that show up. You never, you never know. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm not telling you anything like that's a big secret. I haven't been told anything like that. But it's in New York. It's on Long Island. It's a boxing match. Who knows who might show up to something like that? I tell you, I guarantee who's going to show up. All of these YouTubers. Um, we've got people from the reptile world, the freshwater world, the saltwater world, all animal YouTubers going to be getting in there and duking it out. And I'm going to be telling you all about it. So use that link. Um, I'll share it every week between uh, now and then. Not going to go on and on and on about it like I have now, but remind you about it each week um, to get in there and, and get it pre-ordered so you save a little bit of money. Um, what do I think about Jake Paul and Mike Tyson? Uh, Mike Tyson is somebody I would accept a fight with tomorrow. You want to know why? Because I could go in the ring with Mike Tyson, immediately take a fall and still get paid millions. And nobody would be laughing at me over that because just about anybody would fall to Mike Tyson. I don't care if he's 60 years old or whatever it is. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, it, it's, I guess Mike Tyson needs money. I, I don't know. I mean, his podcast is doing extremely well. Uh, he's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. It seems kind of silly to me. Jake Paul is half, a third his age. It just seems a little, it's, it's a money grab. Everybody knows it's a money grab. And hey, I don't, I don't blame people for doing money grabs. Get, go get your money. If you can get it, get it. Mike's probably getting paid 10 mil for that thing. Do it. Um, that might be the very first YouTuber boxing event on pay-per-view that I will, will buy. Having said that, if I was not a part of Fins and Fury, of course I would be buying that too because I've got a lot of friends that are in that. I don't know if that's going to be happening before Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. Um, but if there was no Fins and Fury, that would be the first one. that Because I, it's Mike Tyson. How many more times are you going to get to see him fight? Anyway, Finsanity said, does gifting work long term? I'd hope they latch on long term. This is a great channel. Well, thank you, Finsanity, uh, Joe. Um, it's, a, it's a one month thing. The, uh, the gifting membership is for one month and then uh, they, I guess, get a message from YouTube asking if they would like to continue. And if they do, then they have to start paying for it. Hopefully what happens is when these generous people like uh, I've seen, which I will get to, so many people already have gifted memberships, um, you know, hopefully they see the value in it and they stick around and, uh, and stay with the party. Draco I M M. I got a I got a biker named Draco. He's the one that jumped earlier. I don't know where he's at, but he's messed my whole tank up. Uh welcome to the team. Became a member, not gifted, got his own membership. 
said, I ain't messing around. Let somebody else have those gifted ones. I'm going to come in for real. Welcome to the team, Draco. Uh, Melissa Jeswald, I have my nitrite. Ni oh, no. It's nerites. Bad vision. Let me zoom in here. Because I don't have my glasses on. And I am not somebody that's willing to wear glasses on YouTube yet. If they were nice glasses... I probably would, but Lisa bought me like some $4 reading glasses from the checkout at Walmart. <laughs> you know, they're not exactly YouTube material. I have my Nerites from KG and they are active and all over. Thank you. I am so glad I read that properly and I didn't read. I have my nitrates from KG. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Lisa has been, she's been doing some stuff with them snails, folks. We got a lot of, <coughs> excuse me a lot of plans for the snail part of our operation. Um, we're going to be adding a bunch of, uh, of places to keep those snails and bringing in some that uh, we didn't, we, we don't have now, but we, we did recently add the assassin snails. A lot of people ask, Hey, I'm big time into planted aquariums. And sometimes you get that nuisance bladder snail that shows up and then all of a sudden, before you know it, you've got an outbreak of snails on uh, in my tank. What do I do about it? Well, an assassin snail, if, unless you want to buy fish that eat snails, puffers, there's others, loaches. Uh, if you want to stay away from those, buy a snail that will take care of those snails for you or multiples. Uh, and that would be the assassin snails. We've got those in there now. She's got a bunch of different colors of ram's horns. She's got the nerite, uh, which is adorable because she calls them nerite. Nerite is what she calls them. It's so cute. Um, we've got the multiple different colors of the mysteries, all kinds of them. And let me tell you something, folks. The amount of snails that that woman packs every Monday is outrageous. I think she packed like 375 snails on Monday. She's one woman. Now, a lot of those are like a 24 pack or a six pack. It's not like individually bagged uh, 375 snails, but it might've even been more than that. Um, because we, we also have the bladder snails, which those she sells in packs of 20. So that's 20 in one bag, but that's still, you know, picking out 20 bladder snails that's a lot. And she had to do that 375 times. Um, I, I would have never imagined snails would be as popular as they are on our website. It's, it's wild. I understand. I totally get it because I know their value. I know they're very cool. They're neat. They're unique. And as long as you don't have fish in the tank that'll eat them, they can actually help your tank, which is cool. It gives you a, another little thing in the tank to create interest. I love that. It's cool. Um, but I would have never imagined as many people buying them as they do on our website. It's, it's nuts. So, but thank you, Melissa. I'm glad that they got to you and, uh, and it all worked out. Finn Sanity, thank God for small towns in Buffalo. That car would be in my impound yard as we speak. Got to be talking about my van. Yeah. Thankfully, uh, I was right there. Uh, and if you're talking about the car that we've abandoned uh, because Lisa got sick, I went into the place and I said, hey, listen, I came here to pick up my wife. She's not feeling good. Can we leave the car out there? They said, take your time. Be fine. So better not be impounded. <laughs> blood screen gifted a membership. Thank you so much for that blood screen. Jacob Small became a member. Welcome. Good grief. And Sean. Is it Russell? Roussel? I still don't know. Gifted five memberships. I told you there's been people in here gifting memberships. And Vincent came in right after that and gifted 10. Keep it, keep it uh, under, let, let, you know, let's keep track here. That's 16 so far. That's bananas. So many people being added to the KG Tropicals team. Thanks so much for that. Everybody that is uh, new to the channel. If you've been gifted a membership today, you get an extra video every single Sunday and it's kind of a laid back. We just talk to you. It, ha it has to do with the video that we did that day 
and it's a lot of fun. So you get to watch those now. So congratulations. Thank whoever it was that gifted you that membership. Guy Ashby, FNA Cotton. Yeah, that I'm uh, FNA Cotton. That's what he meant. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be Jay Wilson. Like I said, he's going to be wearing the Fox jersey. He's going to have the hair and the tattoo, and he's going to do all that. And I'm going to be sitting there like, well, the TPA reports have not been submitted yet and do the old Lundberg. No, I'm not. I'm going to be, I'm going to probably be out of my mind during that fight because how can you not be excited and, and be energetic commentating a fight, especially when it's people that you know, that's crazy. Uh, DeMar's gifted 10. So we're at 26. You people are crazy, crazy. I say, uh, <laughs> 26 gifted channel memberships. I think we're going to break. We might not hit 500,000 subscribers tonight, but we might hit 500,000 members the way y'all are gifting them. Good grief. Uh, Sean Tyson's always got a plan B and going for an ear. Yeah, that was, uh, I remember seeing that and I just remember, oh, if Customato didn't die, if Customato didn't die, that would have never happened. Mike lost control when uh, Customato died. Anybody that watched Mike Tyson's career knows that's exactly what happened. When he went crazy was when he lost his mentor. And that's very sad. Uh, Cranken Invasives, welcome to the team. That's a cool name. That's, and I got it on the first try. That's very cool. Fistachio just received my fish food today. Thanks, you are very welcome, my friend. Um, yeah, I don't... I, I, I'm seeing something here. Uh, and thank you, Fishstachio. And uh, go listen to more Breaking Benjamin. I'm I'm missing something here, and it's bothering me. Let's see, Vincent. Because it says Vincent gifted not 10, like I said earlier. Uh, he gifted 30. He did a 10, and then he did a 20. And... Uh, Wow, but it's not showing up on my list here, which is strange. Uh, Vincent, you're an animal. You're a madman. You're crazy. Uh, thank you for that. Goodness gracious. And then, Leslie, y'all are nuts. Do you realize you should be checked? This is craziness. Dennis, I did this every, I do this every week, Dennis. McKelvey, I'm going to stick with that. Gifted five, Leslie Perry. Gifted five. I think we might make it to 500,000 members before we do subscribers. So, hey, listen. Uh, subscribers. I Subscribers have always been the thing that YouTubers use to measure their you-know-whats. You understand the expression. We're having a D-measuring contest. It's like... How many subscribers you have is always something that uh, it, it's one of the metrics that we're able to use to see where we're at. See how many people are interested in our content. If you know anything about YouTube, it's not the subscribers that uh, that you make money from. It's views. So the views are, you know, really the important thing. Um, and I don't mean to sound like subscribers don't matter. That's not what I'm saying at all. But um grand scheme of things, the level of importance would be uh, views first, subscribers second. However, it's really weird in our world that we operate in. If you're a YouTuber right now, and let's say you have a thousand subscribers, you're going to know exactly what I'm about to say. You're, and you're going to be like, he is a hundred percent right. If you're, if you're a YouTuber in the fish keeping community and you get a thousand, you have a thousand subscribers, but you get 5 million views a month, you could walk into an Aquashella and guess how many people would recognize you as far as the industry people. The answer is probably none, which is a shame. It's a damn shame because what a lot of the industry looks at is subscriber counts. So I could have 500,000 with a million views a month, which is, you know, we're, that's pretty much where we're at. And I walk around there and people are like, oh my God, it's John. 
But that guy that gets five times as many views as I do, which means he's reaching way more people than I am, five times as many people, but only has a thousand subscribers. He could be right next to me. They wouldn't even know who he was. It's a shame. And the reason, but the reason why it happens is because what a lot of the industry uses as, you know, gauging the value of a YouTube channel is the subscribers. Um, and that's kind of backwards, but it's the way it is. So uh, subscribers are very important, but they're also forget about the business side of things, forget about money and all of that nonsense. Um, why subscribers are important to me is because that, that to me, if, if Billy Bob's fish tanks watches 12 of my videos in a row or watches me and Lisa's videos all day long, for two days straight, I have no way of knowing that. I don't know that Billy Bob's Fish Tanks has been watching our stuff for 48 hours straight. I'm thankful that he is, but I don't know that he is. But if Billy Bob's Fish Tanks subscribes to us, I know. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That is, to me, the, the biggest value in subscribers is... It's validation of your work because somebody watches one of your videos and says, you know what? I'd like to see more from these people. I'm going to click subscribe. It's totally free. I know a lot of YouTubers that completely poo poo subscribers. So it doesn't matter. Oh, it matters. It matters because it's, it's like a little pat on the back is how, you know, Hey, good job. You got, you got another subscriber. Good job. These people want to see more of what you're doing. Um, during COVID, subscribers went bananas, folks. I'm not going to lie to you. It went absolutely crazy. I, I can remember uh, checking my analytics, which we all do every day. Every YouTuber, if they tell you they don't, they're lying to you. Every YouTuber checks their analytics every day. And I would just be like, Oh my God, like we got 1,100 subscribers today. Like it's insane. That was our biggest day we ever had was 1,100, I think. Um, it was madness during COVID. And then all of a sudden, like the world went back to normal and that wave went away and it kind of went back to normal. Um, and so, you know, subscribers, we love our subscribers. We, we do everything we can do to appease our subscribers, but it hasn't been like that massive wave of them over the course of the last, well, two years, really. Um, so we haven't gotten to a place in quite a while of achieving a milestone. And in our career, Lisa and I, the next milestone for us is 500,000. And, uh, and it doesn't look like we're going to achieve that tonight, at least live during this live stream. And if it doesn't happen, that's fine. I, I'm not going to be mad at anybody. Uh, I haven't talked about fish at all. <laughs> so it doesn't bother me. Uh, you know, it's, I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't expect it, but, uh, but yeah, I kind of, I, Vincent, r really? Vincent, what are you doing here? 10 more. So there's 40 people that are going to be able to watch Sunday's extra video because of Vincent five more because of Leslie, uh, five because of Dennis 10 because of Demars, And like Demars has been like a hundred over the course of the last month. It's insane. One because of blood screen. You people have lost your minds. Another 10 from DeMars. This is bananas. <laughs> I get a kick out of it so much. This is, this is so much fun. Uh, Kraken Invasives, right on point with name. Glad to have joined. Awesome. Glad to have you. That's very, very exciting. Uh, Shamu Aquatics, nobody would recognize me even if I had 200,000 subscribers because I never show my face. Smart. 
some of my, I'm not going to say who they are because these days you can get a lot of trouble for telling people what, what channels you're subscribed to. Um, some of my favorite channels, I don't even know who, what the YouTuber looks like. I could tell you one that's not controversial at all. I do know what he looks like is uh, emergency. Awesome. That's a channel. When I subscribed to him in, I think, 2014 or 2015, he had 22,000 subscribers. I don't know why I remember that. I think I might remember it simply because I'm like, how does he only have 22,000 subscribers? Um, let me find it here. He now has uh, 4.49 million. <laughs> Hey, I'm one of the first 20,000 of those. Um, he had a spell there for a bit way back in the day where he did show himself. Um, but then he stopped and, and, and I don't, I think it's probably smart. Uh, not that he's a bad looking guy or anything, but because, you know, he can walk around. If you're at four point, basically 4.5 million subscribers on YouTube, you are a superstar. I mean, it's, it's bananas and he, but he could go anywhere he wants and nobody would know that it's him. Maybe if they heard him talk, they'd be like, Hey, wait a minute. Weren't you just talking about Spider-Man in that video? They might recognize his voice. Uh, I've been recognized because of my voice before, which is weird. Uh, that happened recently at darts league. A guy was like, I've heard that voice. And then he remembered, um, but, but yeah, um, who was it that said that Shamu that's, that is not a bad thing because, uh, anonymity is a, is a good thing. Um, not that I have a problem with people recognizing me. It happens. Um, it happens more if we're at somewhere where you would think people would recognize us like a fish store or at a, at an event like aqua shell or something like that. That's kind of, you kind of expect it. I almost... I act like, I know this is going to sound weird, but when I walk around those events, I act like there's the possibility that every human being in there could recognize me this way. I'm not, I don't act like a jerk <laughs> keeps me on, you know, I got to make sure I'm behaving myself because any of these people could know who I am. Most of them don't, but any of them could, and I don't want to make a fool of myself. Vincent said 499,773. I believe that is him uh, talking about how many memberships he's donated to my channel. <laughs> I think that's what he meant by sharing that number. Uh, Powell, P Powell, will you shave your beard? No. Why? No way. My wife loves this beard too much. Ain't no way I'm shaving this off. I like it too. Um, and, uh, and I'm sorry, I love Joey, but if Joey, if you're talking about, will I shave the beard for the, um, for the, for Fins and Fury, if Joey was to ask me to do that, I would say, Joey, I'm sorry, brother, I'm out. Can't make me do that. Are you going to shave your head bald before you get in the ring? No, but Joey wouldn't do that. Joey knows, Joey knows the beard seals the deal for me. He knows that he's a smart guy. I wish I could subscribe again to help. Hey, listen, like I said, every single one is important to us. Again, I don't mean to sound sappy, but it's like a pat on the back, 500,000 pats on the back. Yeah, my back's a little sore from it, but uh, yeah, that's a big deal. Why would you shave your beard there? I, yeah, I, I don't know. Demars is leaving. Demars, you are a rock star, my friend. Thank you for uh, for all the memberships tonight. That's absolutely insane. Uh, Pepsi was developed in North Carolina. It was indeed. I've got a direct endorsement by Pepsi. We should all go out and have a Pepsi today. No, this is what I get every night. Uh, not oh no 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 no. Thursday night, I get a two liter of Pepsi for pizza night. 
I'm a new member, but have learned so much from John and Lisa and their videos and even watching their videos before becoming a member. Thanks, John and Lisa. Don and Sharon Fralick. Thank you. Uh, that's awesome to hear. I, that never gets old hearing that. Uh, too cool for schooly. I love Emergency Awesome. Isn't he great? I started watching him when the uh, Flash TV show came out. That's how I found him. And, uh, and I've been subscribed to him ever since. I think the Nitrogen Cycle is one of the most basic videos, but also the most important for somebody just learning about fish. Hey, Tim, don't you know? Because, you know, you live so close to us. Don't you know that that's why I titled that video on our channel the most important aquarium video ever made? I believe, uh, I believe that's what I titled it. <laughs> Your explanation of the nitrogen cycle is probably one of the best on YouTube. That's a huge compliment. I appreciate that so much. Um, I've always prided myself on being able to explain things in a way that anybody can understand. That's, that's the goal. Um, I don't, I don't want to come across as condescending. I don't want to come across as if I'm talking to people like they're a bunch of children. Uh, I just like to use common sense, uh, involve human analogies, which some people don't like because they're like, they're not humans, they're fish. But I think a lot of human analogies make sense in fish keeping. The one I like to use all the time, and I don't know if I'm the first one to ever say it. I think I've heard Jason say it, uh, my, my podcast partner. Oh, you don't know about the podcast? Tank Talk podcast. Link is in the description. Um, it's a great time. Go over there. We just passed the 2,000 subscriber mark on that channel. Super stoked about that. Um, I think I've heard Jason say this, but I, I think I said it on YouTube first that the analogy that I like to use for an ammonia spike in an aquarium is like a bunch of human beings being trapped in a room that's filling up with smoke gradually. Um, I think that makes total sense to use that to explain what it's like for fish when the ammonia is, is elevating because what does it do? It burns their gills. When your room is filling with smoke, what does it do? It burns your lungs. Makes sense. Um, that's, you know, and I, I feel like explaining things that way makes it easier for people to, to take in. And, uh, and, and there you go. Four ninety nine seven forty two, And we've got 27 minutes left. I think the hope of hitting 500,000 tonight is uh, probably gone. Now, that's what YouTube analytics is showing. Um, I don't know what other things like, I, I don't know if there's any other apps that would show it any differently. We're not going to hit it tonight, folks. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Um, let's see what TubeBuddy says. TubeBuddy says 495. So yeah, they're a little off too. Oh no, it says 499. Uh, just refreshed to 499. I think, and Lisa agrees She's been saying it for a while now, actually. I, I think we both said it at the 100,000 mark. What, what a lot of YouTubers will say, and it makes total sense, is once you get 100,000, that's a really, really big deal. You get the plaque. It's awesome. But then you've got so long, unless you're Jimmy Donaldson, you've got so long before you get to that million. But that's the next milestone. That's the next automatic milestone that everybody talks about. Like, well, once you have a hundred thousand, the next is a million. I disagree. I, I think 500, well, every hundred thousand is a big deal. And every time we have passed another hundred thousand, uh, which has happened four times, it's been a beautiful thing. We get a little giggle and it, it's fun. Um, I 500,000, that's a big deal. And the reason why, if somebody was to ask me tomorrow, and I get asked this all the time, you meet new people and they're like, what do you do? And I, I tell them all the same thing. If I tell them I'm a YouTuber, I just did this at Darts League on Monday. A lady asked me what I do for a living. 
and and I said, uh, okay, hold on. That sounded weird. Why would a lady be walking up to me asking what I do for a living? I was playing darts with on a team with Lisa, and she was on the team that we were playing against, and and I mentioned we got to get this over with because we got an hour and a half drive home back to North Carolina, and, and she said, whoa. And I said, yeah, but you know, we're self-employed, so it's okay. We're, you know, we'll be fine. And she asked, well, what do you do? And I said, some people I'll say this, but most of the time I don't. I'll say, well, you're not going to believe this because I'm, you know, just a 50 year old guy standing here, but I, my wife and I make our living on YouTube. And she was like, what? Was, yeah. And then it's fun. Cause everybody's like, Oh my God, I can't believe you could do that. And blah, blah, blah. There's a big difference between telling somebody that you meet when, because the questions, all, how many subscribers do you have? It always happens. 490,000 does not have the same ring to it as saying to someone a half a mil. That's what I'm waiting for to be able to say, I got a half a million subscribers just to be able to have that million word in there. I'm not privileged like my buddy, Joey, that has over a million. He earned those million. I don't mean to discount that, but, uh, you know, I, I don't have the privilege of being able to say that I'm a member of that club, but I can involve the, the word million in there and I can say I got half a million. And uh, whenever you can include that word in there, it makes you sound pretty big time. <laughs> Simon Nichols and Peanut234, along with Powell, P Powell, I think I already welcomed you, but welcome all three of you to the team. Uh, all became channel members. Thank you so much for that. Liquid Zoo, 450,000 of those are because of Lisa. Sorry, John. Hey, listen, Matt. Those are not fighting words. I agree with that wholeheartedly. In fact, if we were to go all the way back to 2012, or maybe it was 2013, when Lisa made her very first video on the channel, I was telling her then, don't nobody want to look at me? Look at you. You're easy to look at. And you're cute. And you're, you got a great voice. And you're sweet. And everybody would rather look at you than look at me. So if we put you on the channel, we're almost guaranteed success. It took her a while. She made a few videos. Um, Lisa's debut on the channel, her very first video was no matter what she says, this is a hundred percent fact. And she cannot, if she tells you anything other than this, she is a bold faced liar. It was her idea. She said, I have an idea for a video that I want to do. And I said, you tell me what you want me to do and I'll film it. No, no, I want you to leave the camera with me. I want you to show me how to use it. And I want you to get out of here and I'm going to make it myself. I said, okay. And it was the, uh, how much food to feed your fish. I don't recall the exact name of it. I can track it down here for you while we're talking. But, um, that was her very first appearance on the channel other than, uh, maybe popping up in the background a couple times or something like that. I'm not sure, but, uh, let's see. I know it's not far down. Uh, okay. It's not in the first 30 videos that we did. And, I, and you know what? I might've changed the thumbnail on it. So I might've skipped right past it. It's not in the first 60. There it is. September 19th. 2013, 11 years ago, she made the video. It's a minute and 50 seconds long. How much food should I give to my fish? Um, that was completely on her. That was her idea. It was, there was no script. There was no plan. It was just, she turned on the camera and she made that. That video has 74,829 views to date. Um, and for a while there, very early on in this channel's life, uh, that video was flirting with being our top video on our channel. We've got, I think over 20 on the channel now that, that have over a million views. We're, we're very blessed for that. Um, so yeah, that video got left in the dust, but that was a contender for one of our biggest videos back in the day. 
Um, but that, you know, I, I mean, I'm looking at them right here. So she did that one and then it was another shoot, probably. Well, she did another one in October and that, but she did before we started 10 things in 2019, she did maybe 10 or 12 videos because she did a series about Mbunas, which is awesome. She did a series about Discus, which is awesome. Um, but she wasn't into it like I was. Like it was something every once in a while she would get a bug up her butt and she'd be like, yeah, I want to do these videos. I never forced it. I always wanted her to. And I, you can't say I begged her. I guess I could say I begged her. Sometimes I begged her. Um, because I knew, Matt, what you just said, I knew this was true. I knew that people would value her more than me. And I'm okay with that. I, listen, she's a lot easier to look at and listen to than me. I get it. I understand it. She knows her stuff. I knew that people would respond very well to her. Um, and it's, it's a fact. They definitely have. So you are not offending me when you say that most of the people are here to see Lisa because it's, it's just a fact. That's what it is. Let's see if it's updated. Are we going to get even close? Ah, it's only gone up by one. Now, again, I don't know what, I, I don't know how accurate uh, YouTube, I don't know how accurate it is when it updates. I don't know, but it's saying right now, 499, 748. Um, I'm going to give up on that dream of hitting it live on YouTube. I certainly will not go live when we have 499, 990 and be like, Hey, because it, who knows when it's going to happen. Um, it'd be cool to do that. That's probably something I would do if we ever were to get to a million, but with my luck, we'd be in a situation like we are today where it's uh, quite possible that it will happen overnight. And uh, that would make it very difficult. I'm not going to stream at four o'clock in the morning to uh, celebrate bringing in a half a million subscribers. <laughs> Just followed the podcast on Spotify. Going to catch up on those. Awesome. You are... Uh, you're going to love it. It's not just me. It's me and Jason. Jason's awesome. Uh, oh, come on now. Your worst video is better than my best video. Do you still sell live fish? We do not. Leah, I'm sorry. Um, we had to get out of that. We were, it was bankrupting us. We had to get out of it. Um, let's see. I hate this part hate this part uh lisa said worst video ever made it's not Seventy-four thousand people would disagree with that lisa marie t-g-o-e in the house what's that mean their youtube is exploding recently good channel t-g-o-e what's that garden of eater i mean if you had said shelby or grant i would have known that uh, Garden of Eater, it's the first time I've seen that name in here in a long time, Grant or Shelby, whichever one you are, uh, you might want to watch our video on Sunday. I'm just saying. You might want to watch it. That's all I'm going to say. Remember? Remember those blue dreams? Remember them? Yeah. Uh, Garden of Eater is an awesome guy. His wife is even better than him. Uh, extraordinary aquascaper. Um, and Shelby, and Grant's, Grant's okay too, but Shelby has a style. She's one of the few aquascapers that I know that when I go to these aquashellas, she's always competing. They, they compete together. I'm sorry, Grant. I'm not trying to discount you. Uh, you're very talented too. But if you, you know, all the tanks are in a line. And if I was to walk up to that line and they're all done, which it never, I always see everybody working on it. So this never happens. But 
if I was to walk up and they're all done, I'd be able to pick out which one is Shelby's because she has a style and I, that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And it, it's, it's very evident. I just saw the funniest thing. This is, this is where my mind, there's a little bug in here. I wish this could have been on camera. And it was fluttering around one of Lisa's lights, like a little teeny moth. All of my Africans, the peacocks and haps, were kind of up at the top of the tank, not breathing heavy. They're just, they were just up there. And the bug flew across the front glass and they all went and chased it. It was really, really cute. But, but anyway, uh, you might have been able to see it in the reflection. Probably not. I can spot a Shelby tank from a mile away. And, and I mean that as, as the highest form of compliment possible. Um, Shelby, if that's you, if it's not Grant, uh, or if you're listening in the background, do not be offended by what I just said. I meant that in the most complimentary way. You know I always dote all over you for your aquascaping skills. It pisses me off how good you are at that. And uh, it pisses me off how much noise you make doing it because it gets on my nerves because I'm trying to work. And I'm like, bang, bang, bang. She's banging up all these rocks and stones and really gets on my nerves. But uh, I'm joking. Uh, extraordinary is the word that I would like to use. Um, and there's very few people that in the aquascaping world that I use that word for. Uh, Jeff Miyake, who I absolutely idolize. Uh, George Farmer, of course. Um, Shelby is one of them. Melanie Holmes. Jen Williams, I could keep on going. Jeff Sensky. Uh, Jeff Sensky, the, the funny thing. Uh, this is a story I don't believe I've ever told on here. And, and I hope it doesn't embarrass Lisa. But uh, Lisa was scaping a tank at Aquashella. One of them. I don't know. It was Dallas last year, I think. And uh, Jeff Sensky was scaping the tank next to her. He was doing a, a saltwater scape. And she had no clue who he was. I mean, you know, Jeff is, is a well-known guy in the aquascaping circles, Aquarium Design Group. I mean, he's a big name in the aquascaping world. But to somebody who's not in the aquascaping world, you might not know who he is. You just think he looks like Tony Tucci, which he does. Um, I think that's the actor's name. But Jeff is scaping next to her. And I, I had not met Jeff. I, I think I had said a few things to Jeff, but I wouldn't really consider having met him before this. Uh, but of course I knew who he was. And Lisa gets done with her tank. And I, and I walk up and Jeff is standing like this. And he's looking back and forth, not at his tank, but at hers. And I'm like, ooh, this is a beautiful thing. And he looks at it and and he he tells lisa you know this is this is gorgeous what you've done it's beautiful he has that deep jeff sensky voice it's beautiful what you've done here but could i could i suggest one thing and lisa has no clue who he is she's like yeah of course and he gave her a little pointer and it was it made a world of difference it was really really good advice that he gave her and then she thanked him and it was a very very pleasant thing and then Jeff walked away and, and did his thing. And I'm like, do you, do you even know who that is? That's like, that's like Norm Abram telling you you built a beautiful cabinet. I mean, that's a big deal. That's Jeff Sensky. I don't know who that guy is. I'm like, well, that's, he's him and his brother own Aquarium Design Group. They're kind of big time in the aquascaping world. She was like, oh, that's cool. Uh, that, was, that was neat to see that. Um, and, uh, but anyway, Jeff is another one that is, in my opinion, world-class Oliver, not, we could go through the list of people that are, uh, world-class aquascapers and don't tell him I said this because I don't think he needs this boost to his ego, but I think, uh, I think old Mark Davis is a little underrated too. I think he's, well, he's not underrated. The dude's about to hit a million subscribers. Uh, he's very good at what he does too. Um, but I would put Shelby and Grant, but Grant, you know, she does, it's kind of her thing, right? Like you help out, but isn't it, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's completely 
50-50, I don't know. But I always associate Shelby as the one doing it. Um, she is, I would put her in that same category as all of those other people. Very good at what she does. Um, and that's a, that's a cool thing because the aquascaping world is like 50-50 men, women. And in 2024, that's a good thing. Um, I don't even know why I just said that, but I did. And, you know, I can't unsay it, but it's certainly not controversial, is it? Um, let's see here. 753. We can't, I can't stay on until we get to 500. I'd be on here all night. We still got to go get Lisa's car. If we're even going to go tonight, I think it'd be fine to leave it overnight, but uh, Aaron, what are you on about? Let's see what Aaron's on about your bots. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, whatever. Jeff Sensky is a great guy. That was not from Aaron. Aaron's typing like he's nine. Uh, and that's fine. Eric or uh, Aaron, we're happy to have you here. But uh, don't make me put it back on. You can only put a chat in every 60 seconds because, you know, sentences are better than one word. Anyway, can anyone recommend a seller of alien betas? I can't find any of my local shops. Oh, that is a tragedy because we used to sell so many of them. Um, if I'm being honest, I don't know who sells, uh, aliens. Yes, John named them all. Don't leave anyone out. Ah, so Shelby's tank from global expo is amazing. Definitely has great style. Yeah. Y'all see what I'm saying? I see what I'm trying to find out here is if, uh, if Shelby is offended by what I said. Uh, Easton Outdoors is here. That's a name I haven't seen in our live stream in a while. Uh, do you not know who Easton Outdoors is? Sorry, Micah. I'm like all out of sorts here tonight. Lisa's sick. It's this whole thing. Uh, Micah and his crew, crew, Easton Outdoors, is the one that built my pond, which is doing amazing. Uh, it's, it's absolutely thriving right now. It's really coming together and I love it. Um, and he's also the one that if you watch the video that I did, uh, rescuing the goldfish, if you didn't see that, there's going to be a clip from it this weekend. You don't show up in it, Micah. I'm sorry. It's basically just my hand, um, because I talk about feeder goldfish and, uh, and I show one that we rescued that day that is now one of the most amazing goldfish you've ever seen. And um, anyway, watch the video and you'll see it. But I, that, that's who I was there with at the pond rescuing those fish was Micah, the owner of Easton Outdoors. So big round of applause for Micah, folks. Uh, his brother and crew builds a beautiful pond. And uh, I am absolutely in love with it. It's unfortunate. I, all right, listen. Micah, you're going to be, you're going to be mad at me for saying this, but I'm going to tell everybody right now. And, uh, Lisa's not going to like me saying this either because I'm going to make a fool of myself, but it is what it is. I sometimes do things that are not so smart. And that was certainly the case when, uh, when we got the pond. We had rocks around it. If you've seen the pond, you know what I'm talking about. There's rocks all around, uh, large rocks all around the pond that form the shape of the pond. And I knew, Lisa and I, our plan was to do a, a small amount of pea gravel around it because all of the gravel on my property is pea gravel. Why can't it just be regular blue gravel? But it's pea gravel, the more expensive stuff. I knew we were going to do a little bit of that, and then we were going to do mulch, a, a mulch ring around that, and then plant some other things and put some of the extra big stones in there and stuff like that, which is exactly what we've done. But my brain sometimes makes poor decisions when it comes to these kinds of things. And for some reason, I thought, well, since we just got this done, and it was basically 
this gorgeous pond. Uh, all of the rocks beautiful. We put some plants and everything. But the, the surrounding area was all dirt because that's kind of how it works. I was like, you know what? I don't know when we're going to do the gravel. I don't know when we're going to do the mulch. Let me throw some grass seed down. It didn't grow in at all. But the reason it didn't grow in was because it wasn't in the ground. It was just laying on the surface. And probably a month later, we did the gravel and the mulch. But I couldn't see any of the grass seed. I figured it just washed away. Our soil is very sandy. And I figured it just washed out. It's no big deal. We'll just go ahead and throw down the gravel, throw down the, uh, the mulch. No big deal. Well, big mistake. Because over the fall and winter and now spring when grass really likes to pop up, now it's popping up all over the place. And it's my fault. Lisa spent all day on Sunday picking out grass and weeds from around the pond. It's my fault. I was going to do it, but she volunteered to do it because I was doing other things. And, you know, it's fine. Uh, all day long, she was out there picking those weeds and uh and it's my dumb fault uh, it's under control now but micah would have cursed me if he saw that it wasn't like all grass it was just popping up in little clumps here and there through the mulch through the gravel it's so annoying and it i'm just like i don't understand what was going through my brain throwing that grass seed down like that it was really really dumb you can't use Roundup close to the water. Yeah, we definitely didn't. Uh, I, did, I, I did spray like 12 feet away. Um, so she was picking everything that was right up there next to the pond. Uh, basically like in the gravel surround around it. I didn't spray anywhere near the pond because I'm not that stupid. I'm pretty daggone stupid, but not that stupid. Um, but yeah. Pea gravel is pennies in the UK. It's uh, it's not pennies here if you're going to buy a lot of it. I, I went to a place because my driveway is pea gravel, which looks great until it doesn't. I spent so much time already on that driveway this year already. Uh, my beautiful wife allowed me to buy a piece of equipment that makes it very easy to maintain that driveway, but it's very thin and I need more. Uh, 10 tons, which is a dump truck full, a triaxle full, is, uh, it's like $1,200. Um, I want to extend my driveway a lot. <laughs> I want to run my driveway all the way back to my barn. I want to, you know, I, I want, I want gravel everywhere because, you know, UPS drives back there, the dumpster, we our trash guy comes every thir every other Thursday in one of those big trucks that pulls up and picks the dumpster up and dumps it into the truck. It's one of those small dumpsters. Um, and that guy destroys my yard every time he does it. And when we, when they put it back there, I asked him if he could put it back there. And the guy was like, you know, the truck's going to, and I said, I know, but the barn is, a quarter of a mile away from the road. We're not going to put it up at the road. If we're going to have to take all of our trash up there from the warehouse, why are we even going to have it? I'll just throw it in the truck and take it to the dump. So I'm like, just go ahead and put it there and I will deal with what happens afterwards. Um, and so every other week I've got to go out there and I got to fix all of the giant ruts that the big truck puts in the ground. I mean, welcome to, welcome to living in the coastal plains where you literally live on sand. Do you think the brick on the accelerator to turn back the odometer, Ferris Bueller, works for birthdays? Mine is tomorrow. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? I've got a birthday coming up that's the big one. I might as well be turning 100. I, I am not going to be able to deny... Uh, 
being called an old timer in three months. Not looking forward to that. Watching KG Tropicals is a driving force to the success of my fish room. Thanks so much, guys. Wow. That's, uh, that's hopefully what's, what's done, what we've done is shown you a lot of things not to do because I can show you some mistakes. Trust me, I can do that. Uh, you good at Fortnite? No. In fact, I'm so bad, I deleted it. Because it was taking up space in my PS5. And I was like, nah, it's enough. I've done multiple test strips, ammonia tests, and everything is perfectly fine. He just started floating today. Uh-oh. We got to find out what OK. How'd you end up with the name OK? How was that not taken? Um, yeah, Dylan. I th okay, this is what happens when you read it backwards. Let me see if I can go up to OK's. I can't find it now. It's gone. OK, well, I can't find that. Sorry. OK. I'm, I'm desperately looking for it because this is right up my alley. Um, where was the one I saw? My least favorite thing to see anybody do on live streams is what I'm doing right now. Yes, I've done multiple. Okay, I'm just reading the same thing over again. Um, one of the things that bothers me, and I'm not yelling at you, okay. Um, you typed sad face and the iPhone did not automatically insert the emoji. That was kind of a fail on iPhone's fault, iPhone's part. Um, okay, I'm not coming down on you, the viewer whose name is okay. There's a lot of situations where people will just say, I tested everything and it's okay. I'm not saying you, okay, are doing that. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I've seen that happen. A lot. We had that happen in our own store. We had a guy come in and he said, my fish keep dying and I don't know what's wrong and I need to get to the bottom of what's wrong with my water. And I said, well, what does your test say? Test is perfectly fine. Okay, bring me some water. He went home, small town. He got some water. He came back, tested it, ammonia through the roof. Is it possible that his test kit could have been bad? Maybe. But what I gathered from that, uh, and listen, I'm not saying this is you, okay? Okay, okay, okay. I don't think he tested at all. I think what happened, not you, okay? Okay, okay. This guy that was at our store just wanted to come into our store to say, tell me how to fix this problem. Tell me a chemical that I can put in there. Tell me a button I can push. Tell me a switch I can flick. Tell me a piece of equipment. Tell me something that I need to get to fix this problem. I don't want to hear about anything that I could have possibly done wrong. I don't want to hear about any future work that I could possibly have to do. I want you to tell me what I need to know to fix my problem right now and there's no way to do that that's what that guy wanted not okay not the person okay not accusing you of this but that guy that was at our store that was his situation he just wanted somebody to tell him what he wanted to hear um and i was not able to do that because I need to get to the bottom of this. I need real information. I'm not going to tell you to put a piece of equipment on because there's no piece of equipment that's going to make your ammonia go away. I, I don't think such a thing exists. If I'm wrong, what have I been doing this whole time? <laughs> I don't think that thing exists. It, it goes away 
by setting your aquarium up properly, letting it cycle, letting nature take its course. That's how you do it. And I had to explain that to that guy. And whether he did that or not, I don't know. I don't think we ever saw him again. But that is not the only story like that. So many times people would come to us with problems. Well, what does your test say? It tests fine. Okay. Well, what is your nitrate level? It's fine. What is your nitrite? It's fine. Well, what's fine? It's fine. And then when you really drill down and you really get to the bottom of it, they didn't test the damn thing. They're just saying that it's fine because they just want an easy solution. And so, okay, I'm not saying that's you, but it, I'm immediately taken there when I see people post everything checked out fine. It's just, it's the cynic in me, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, listen, folks, it's 935. We have not achieved our goal and that's okay. <laughs> when I, when I set, set up this stream and I titled it, can we get to 500 K live? I didn't think it was going to happen. And it's not, I, I don't mean to sound like a jerk. I just like, we lose subscribers every, <laughs> every live stream. We don't gain 200 and something. So I didn't think it was going to happen, but maybe some buzz would start to happen. People would start talking and uh, start sharing, but that doesn't happen for a channel that has almost a half a million subscribers because nobody thinks we need any help. We're, we're all good. We're fine. You don't need to help those big channels, help everybody else. That That's the the bitter me talking right now, but that's you can't expect that that kind of thing is going to happen. Uh, we're on our own here, and to get 250-something during a live stream is uh, it's a bit lofty of an ask, but unless something catastrophic happens, unless YouTube decides, you know what? This week is one of those weeks where we clear out all the bot subscribers and we lose 2,700 subscribers this week. Um, I, th I can say very confidently that just going by the numbers, we should have achieved that uh, certainly by next week's live stream. And, uh, and that's gonna be a big deal because like I said, to be able to say a half a million is a big deal. But listen, there's something else I'd like to see a half a million of. I'd like to see a half a million people buy the Fins and Fury pay-per-view. I shared that link already. I'm going to share it again for all you people that have hung out here till the very end. If you want to see a bunch of YouTubers that are in the fish keeping community fight each other and you want to hear me do play-by-play -play announcing of that, grab that link right there, pre-order the pay-per-view for Fins and Fury. Get to see people like uh, Joey Mullen, Rod from Predatory Fins, LRB, Troy Holler from Cichlid Bros, the Pond Digger, Eric Triplett, a lot of big names are going to be involved in this thing. And uh, they are going to be fighting each other. And I'm going to be sitting there ringside saying, Look at this. Look at that right hook. Uppercut from the king of DIY. And I wonder if Joey wants me to call him Joey or the king of DIY. Because so I got to tell you, if I'm sitting there commentating and I'm like, king of DIY, with an that's going to sound really weird. Because I'm certainly not going to call Rod predatory fins. <laughs> Am I going to call Troy cichlid bros? <laughs> the pond digger with a nice left. Uh, it's not going to work. We're going to have to call these people by their names, but uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to see that in person, you can buy tickets on the website, uh, Fins and Fury, if you want. Those are going to sell out very fast. I think there's only 900 and something available to, to actually be there live for the event, um, but it's unlimited for pay-per-view. So as many people as want to see it, um, order that up on pay-per-view, save $10 by ordering it now. Um, and uh, it's August 17th. Nine fights are going to be on that card, headlined by uh, the main event, which is the King of DIY versus Predatory Fence. going to be a lot of fun. I will be there. I will uh, be commentating. Lisa will be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, I've still got to go get Lisa's car. So uh, 
I don't know if she's going to go with me or if I'm just going to call an Uber to go to her car. I don't even know if Uber's come out here. We'll see. But I got to go do that. Uh, thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Didn't really talk fish at all tonight, which is not going to be a good thing for my analytics and uh, stuff like that. But it was nice to be able to just chat with you after a pretty rough day. Uh, thank you for tolerating me and hanging out with me. Hopefully Lisa will be back next week and we'll see you then.